will follow it up by a moment of silence. Could we all stand, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Since our last remain standing. Since our last meeting, we have had one member of the Dighton community pass. On February 25th, 2023, Dighton resident Edmund Braga, age 85, passed peacefully at home, surrounded by his loving family after a long illness. He is survived by his wife, Elaine Pine Bragger. Our thoughts and condolences go out to the Bragger family at this time. Thank you. First item on the agenda. Chief, could you come up, please? Good evening. Good evening. I have had the privilege of knowing Mr. Duddy since his youth. He served this community with great devotion, as he did his country as a veteran. At this time, it is unfortunate, but I'm sure in his life, well earned, he has announced his retirement. And Chief, mm -hmm. I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, it's bittersweet. Um, I'm very happy for him, but obviously it's a loss to us. Uh, Jimmy gave us 20, Seven? 27 years of service to this town. Uh, and I don't even think that includes your fire time. So um, <clears throat> you don't find that now. You don't find people that are dedicated to public service as much as, as you know, we were used to growing up. But um, you know, there's some, some good war stories between us and uh, <laughs> some good times, some bad times. And uh, he's going to be missed. You know, a, lot of, a lot of the officers went to him for guidance. And Jimmy, again, you know, three decades of, of service, that's a lot. You see a lot. And you can offer, um, you can offer a lot during that time. So we're going to miss him, but I know that he's excited for retirement. He's excited for his next chapter, and we all wish him the best. Thank you. I have a proclamation on behalf of the town of Dyke, a certificate of recognition. Whereas Officer James Duddy began his tenure with the town of Dayton on September 1st, 1995 as a firefighter and was then promoted to the rank of call lieutenant paramedic on September 1st, 1998. On July 24th, 1996, he was appointed as a reserve police officer and was most recently appointed to a full-time to full -time status on March 7th, 2004. Whereas Officer James Duddy served in the United States Army as a combat, combat medic, and whereas Officer James Duddy has volunteered for the Marine Corps as a certified instructor for the Young Marines program, and whereas J Officer James Duddy has served as a drill instructor for the Youth Police Academy, where he led his troops to success by teaching them discipline and respect. And whereas Officer James Duddy has served the town with great excellence as a police officer, continually demonstrating exemplary service to the town of Dighton and its residents with great pride and distinction. And now we, the Board of Selectmen of the town of Dighton, do hereby recognize and thank Officer James Duddy for his outstanding 27 years of service to both the Dighton Fire and Police Departments, and commend him for his many years of dedication and commitment. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the great seal of the town of Dighton 
to be affixed on this eighth day of March, 2023. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Dyke, Leonard E. Hall, Jr., Chairman, Peter D. Karen, Clerk, Kenneth J. Pacheco, Member. Mr. Daddy, could you come before us? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have another presentation. <laughs> Officer Hathaway, could you come to the podium with our honored guest? Oki, the comfort dog. Yeah, so I'm gonna have Officer Hathaway speak tonight, but as, a, as an overview, uh, Oki's been with us now for nine months? Just about eight? Eight months, and um, he is, Extraordinary in a lot of ways. Uh, I'll let Officer Hathaway talk about the things that he's doing in the schools and things in the community. Um, but one thing I was particularly proud of is I got a report from the training uh, uh, school that he goes to, and the instructors say that he well, clearly he's obedient, right? Um, the, instru <laughs> the instructors say that the what, top three they've ever had, top four, top four they've ever had. Yeah. And I think that's pretty incredible. So as long as, uh, I guess he fakes listening, he'll, he'll, he'll keep that title. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's completed his training. Um, he does have some regular in-service that he needs to attend. But um, I'd like to have Officer Hathaway talk about you know, Oki and some of the things that he's doing with him. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, supporting Oki and I, uh, Chief Cronin, um, the rest of the guys. Um, Oki uh, in the school, he's, he's fantastic every day. We're, we're either the middle school, elementary school. Uh, we visit the Aggie school from time to time. And uh, he's gotten to the point now that he sees kids in the hallway and he automatically lays down because <laughs> he just wants to get pet as they walk by. Especially in the elementary school, they're so small. Uh, one little hand by and they, they drag right across and it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, we set up regular appointments. Teachers can schedule them to come to the classroom. We read stories. We hang out. We do projects with the kids. Um, it's uh, something that if we didn't have him, I don't think would be possible. Uh, we've made a connection that, that uh, humanly we, we can't do. Um, so he's we're going to continue his training. He's going to have a, a year of in-service. Every month we go. Um, some days it's a half day. Some days it's a full day. It all varies on what we're doing. If we're going to um, track the supply we go to all the time because it's different interaction, different smells there. Um, we're going to further his training, hopefully this summer, um, do a friendly find. Um, that would be like for uh, anybody with autism, um, anybody with dementia that wanders, he would be able to come in and, and uh, help locate them. <coughs> That's um, cool. So ho hopefully he's uh, meeting and succeeding all of his, uh, everything that we have him. I know. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had in service today, so I wasn't with him all day. So he's, he's, he's a little uh, worked up. Um, usually at this time, we get home from school. He comes in the house, and uh, he lays in front of the fireplace. and. That's it. We don't see him for the rest of the day. Uh, he's usually worn out. So, um, but again, thank you guys for your support. Thank you. Chief Cronin. And, and one of the things that a lot of people don't realize yeah. is that Oki has indirectly yeah. helped to better relations, 
between the town of Dighton and the town of Rehoboth. The bond that he has made with the Rehoboth students at the high school is incredible. And it has helped to bring the two towns closer together, it really has. And that I appreciate. I, you know, I was speaking to the vice chair of the Board of Selectmen today, uh, and he was talking about how the relationship between the two towns and the two police chiefs, I might add, has gotten closer, and the level of cooperation between Robert PD and Dighton PD has gotten stronger, and we're all better for that. We have a certificate of recognition. Oh, okay. We, the undersigned, do hereby congratulate Comfort Dog Oki on his exceptional performance during puppy classes and the positive impact that he and his handler, Student Resource Officer Stephen Hathaway, have made on the residents of Dighton and surrounding towns. In witness whereof, we hereby exclaim that he has passed his puppy probation period and is now officially sworn in as a member of the Dighton Police Department on this eighth day of March 2023. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Dighton, Leonard E. Hull Jr. as Chairman, Peter D. Karen Clerk, Kenneth J. Pacheco, Member. Thank you. Thank you. Come back this way. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marcel, yeah. so if I could have two minutes. Two, two minutes. <laughs> so e even though we're recognizing Oki, I, I think that uh, we, we absolutely have to recognize Officer Hathaway. Uh, being an SRO is a big ask, and he came into the program uh, you know, running, and he's done an incredible job. SRO Bennett has, has complimented him very nicely. Um, but not only is the SRO a big ask, but now you incorporate a dog, a family member. Um, there's a lot to it, and we, uh, we're very, very happy that he's taken this on. Uh, and I'll be honest, I, I'm not quite sure it'd be as successful um, if he wasn't doing it, because he genuinely does care. Uh, he cares for the, for the department, he cares for the dog, uh, and he loves the schools. So, I mean, we couldn't really ask for more. So I want to say that we appreciate everything you're doing, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I also would like to... Sorry. Um, next on the agenda. Reserve Officer, Police Officer Kenneth R. Almeida. Uh, there is a request by Chief Cronin to appoint Kenneth R. Almeida as a full-time police officer. Mr. Almeida, Officer Almeida, could you come forward, please? Thank you. So again, we continue with the bittersweet kind of atmosphere here. Jimmy's heading out and Kenny's coming in. Um, Kenny is leaving um, an organization that he's been, been at for almost two decades. Um, this is rare for us to be getting as much experience as we're getting. Uh, Kenny has proven himself to be uh, an extraordinary officer with us. Uh, he's got a great demeanor. He's got a his discipline is, is, is on par with what we need in this world of policing. Um, and to be quite candid, I've never had any other officer with as many uh, certifications as Kenny Almeida. Um, he is a master instructor in many disciplines. Um, he teaches at the academies. Uh, and he actually uh, trained and, and certified some of our own officers uh, for post-C certification. So uh, we are extremely fortunate to be getting uh, not only Kenny, but everything that Kenny brings um, with him. So, um, you know, and as a testament to him, I see his, his uh, still boss here uh, supporting him, and I think that's all I really 
need to say is that you have somebody that's leaving, but yet is still supported as both a colleague and a friend. So um, congratulations, welcome, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Unfortunately, town clerk Mark Pacheco is not able to attend this evening because of family illness. Yes. So it will be necessary for the chief mm -hmm. to officially pin the badge on you this evening. And you, he needs to go to town hall to be sworn in by the clerk. He's correct? already sworn in for this fiscal. I think it's just a, uh, a designation change, but we, uh, I'll, I'll check on that. Okay. That's easy enough. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Could you welcome aboard? Thank you. Oh, you have one. Hmm? You have it's a badge. Oh, okay. Yes. Right, <laughs> You're going to midnight. Oh, yeah, wait. Yeah, midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Welcome to Thank you. Chief? Yeah. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will need to officially appoint. Kenneth R. Elmeter as a full-time police officer. Um, we will need to do that by a vote. I will entertain a mo motion to appoint Kenneth R. Elmeter as a full-time police officer. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Thank you very much. Do you mind if we took some photos while we're all inside? No problem. Okay, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Kevin. Oh, that's on me. I will. Sorry. I know. We're talking about you earlier. Yeah. 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 It still hasn't sunk in. Like that? Well, uh, you know what yeah. yeah. So, but I, my kids turned 18 in seven days. My oldest stepdaughter is like 26. My middle stepdaughter is married. But they're being summoned, they can. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Gender, Mr. William Moore, member of the Board of Assessors. He has spent a great deal of time doing research and would like to lead us in a discussion in regards to a senior tax abatement. Mr. Moore, thank you for your efforts. Good evening, gentlemen. Now, first I say, can I clear a room or what? <laughs> it's like a superpower. Boom, they're gone. <laughs> Um, so I've got uh, some more updated information from uh, the last time we spoke. Uh, I'm not going to reiterate everything uh, I said before, uh, but basically uh, we are currently at, uh, using a 41C uh, exemption for seniors. And what I told you last time is we had an income uh, limit of 13,000 for single and 15,000 for <clears throat> uh, married. And um, I found out that that is not correct. There is another uh, part of the senior tax exemption that we have adopted in Dighton, which is section 41D, which is, uh, allows for cost of living adjustment. So the numbers are higher, but that has not been well known. Um, I got uh, the actual numbers uh, as of uh, fiscal year 2023 is for a single person is $29,000 and for a $823.28. Married is $41,370.17. So whereas last time I was saying that you know our current uh, limits were destitute, I'm gonna say uh, this is not destitute. Uh, my, my opinion, this is probably more just, um, you know, these are not wealthy people, um, but they're, uh, they're not like, you know, soup kitchen uh, kind of material. So um, I spent a, a good deal of time uh, discussing with um, Lara, uh, the, with the Council of Aging, and um, found out that a lot of people really just don't know about the senior tax exemption and what limits currently apply. So we have already taken uh, under um, a, 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 an effort to sort of promote what we already have 
um, because as of right now, we only have 32 people that are, are current, they have applied for and gotten a senior tax exemption in town. And we feel that's pretty low. So I believe that a lot of it has to do with lack of knowledge, that uh, our seniors don't know that this is available to them. We've advertised it in the strawberry vine, and so far, uh, Ms. Schechter has told me that she's gotten a lot of phone calls from seniors who are now asking about this exemption. So, uh, and, and by the way, also, um, I, I conducted a, uh, some research on the um, census information that was given to me by Mr. Pacheco, uh, the clerk Pacheco. Um, and uh, just FYI, uh, from that census, our total population is 6,658 people. Um, and by the way, this does not count uh, people under 18. So it's a number somewhat higher than that. Uh, there are 2,605 unique addresses, uh, which, is co which pretty much is what I get from the assessor's office as well, so that number seems to be pretty close to me. Um, now what I did, and I know this is not fully scientific or fully fact, is I, I went through every household and found the, um, the person of the oldest age at that house to, to try to say, you know, what was the most senior person in the house. Now, I'm gonna say most of the time that's gonna to correlate to an owner, uh, but not necessarily. We could have a situation where people have their parents living with them or something like that. Um, so based on simply each individual address and who is the oldest person there, we have uh, 921 households that are over 65 and 650 households that are over 70. So, uh, fully you know, like one third of the households in Dighton have somebody over 65. One third. Um, and 650, what is that? Uh, one fourth, one fifth, somewhere in that area. Uh, about a quarter of households is somebody over 70. So there's a lot. And so and you compare those numbers 650 people over 70, uh, and we currently have 32. People, uh, so, so what I'm saying is I think that only 32 out of 650 is pretty low. Um, so I think it might, it's totally up to you, of course. Uh, my recommendation, though, would be to uh, leave the 41C as is because um, it does have decent uh, income limits. Um, as far as whether you want to rate lower the, the number from 70 to 65, uh, yeah, from 70 to 65, that'd be your call. Like I said, it's, it would give us a third more, but I don't know how many people are going to sign up. You know, I don't know if that 32 number is going to go to 40 or if it's going to go to, you know, hundreds. You know, if it goes to hundreds, it's going to start being a, a big number. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. My recommendation would be probably be to stick with 70 for at least a year and see if, you know, by promoting it, if we can get more people to join. The other side of the coin, uh, by the way, and I would like to recommend to the Board of Selectmen to put on our uh, town meeting this year, is that although we adopted this 40D for income, we have not adopted it for assets. So as of right now, we've got... Uh, if you're a single person, your assets are $30,000, and you're married, you're $32,000, um, which is significantly lower. It's almost the same as what you get for your income limits. So I would like to move forward with making sure that we get the annual cost of living adjustment to our um, assets as well as the income. So obviously we're doing it for income. I'd like to do it for assets as well. Um, that would go on the warrant, correct? Yeah, you'd have to, any changes either, if you wanted to change the type of exemption, if you wanted to change the income limit, if you want to change uh, the asset amount, if you want to change the age, each one of those would be separate uh, articles. Do you have a draft of a proposed article? No, I could certainly make one if you asked me to, but I, I want to see what the board, uh, what the feelings of the board is, what they how you would like to go. 
Um, would you like to do nothing? Would you like to change 75 to 60? Would you like to adopt the uh, cost of living adjustment for um, for the assets as well as income? Mr. Uh, Karen? It's pretty sad that we only have 32. Yeah. Um, but, but like I said, I really think that's a lack of knowledge. Right. I think well, that people just aren't aware. What if we put a out in the uh, tax bills? Well, so, so we've already done, so that's what we did with the strawberry vine. That went out to a lot of our senior citizens. But, yeah, but not everybody reads it. And two, um, if you put it with the taxes, it's a direct. Look, if, if you qualify, you can get money off of this well, tax form. That I've, I've got, <clears throat> I got this very nice sheet uh, from Ms. Schechter. Um, and I would suggest putting this right in every tax bill. Yeah. Um, and this clearly spells out. This was the thing that I did not. We have this half here is on our website. This half is not. And I think that's the problem. It, it, what we had is a situation where it says, you know, if you are, um, let's see, 41C, uh, it says you have to own and occupy the property and you have to be 70 years old and a mass resident. And after that, it says, call assessor, no, call the assessor's office. You know, it didn't give the, you know, so it didn't give the exact, you know, details of what other qualifications. And uh, I think for me personally, anytime I'm looking at something and it says, what's the price? Call. Right. Next. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go through the trouble of that. Right. So um, I would, if, if putting something in the tax bill, which I think I've seen like we've done, haven't we done like solid waste things and things like that? Isn't that possible? I don't know about solid waste. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, recycling done, program yeah. or stuff right. like that. <clears throat> Is Mike on board? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Yes, I believe um, like in the, um, so in the tax bills that just went out at the end of last calendar year, um, for the limited room in the current mailer that we have, we did uh, add uh, um, a degree of information, but to Mr. Moore's point, like I think really for the town doing a better job of really spelling it out, so like and really educating and informing people about what the town already offers, uh, like I do think, um, so like with the tax bills, through the strawberry diet, and even online, we've been trying to make more of a concerted effort. But as he pointed out, we, so in order to pick, uh, like, and really educate and make aware the residents that we need to, we have to really continue making this a priority. Mr. Moore, could I have, could I have that for a moment, please? It's my only copy. You need to give it I'll, back. I'll give it back <laughs> to you. I'm going to give this back to you. Double secret information. Would the Board of Selectmen support a motion to place this as part of a mailer in the next tax bill? I could. Number one, the next tax bill is going to come out for May. It's going to go beyond the April 1st date. April 1st is so the deadline. That, this yeah. should really go. And it's not on the agenda to vote on this, but this should really go in the January 1st tax bill that we all get. That's when uh, residents should get it. But it's also important that the residents get the correct information, and you gave the wrong information at the in January 25th. So I'm wondering how many people out there thought the income was 15000 not the mm -hmm. 29000 or 30 uh, some thousand. So I think it's important that they get the accurate information so the residents can apply. I think it's a little higher, that number of people who have applied, not necessarily have been accepted for the abatement. So I got directly from yeah. Chris Schechter, who was our lead assessor. Yeah, those that, are the ones that have accepted, but more people have applied. And appla no, honest. she said 32 have applied. She was very specific about yeah, Well, the other day she said, told me 47. So just, okay. either way, 32 are, or 31 are eligible, okay. which is important to know. Would you agree that January would probably be a more appropriate time to place this in the tax bill? I agree, yeah, um, because we're going to have to, it has to be by April 1st, you know, as Mr. Pacheco said, he's correct. So I don't think getting it out, you know, any sooner than okay. the end of the year is going to be helpful. But I do think it's a good idea for us to work towards 
uh, getting people to know what we have before we start drastically changing um, the, the requirements. Uh, how about we just make sure that people understand the requirements? Because that seems to be the big problem right now. You want to have a better idea is the number of people who are interested as more people know about this so we exactly. can have a better idea whether we should be changing stuff or not. Exactly. But I do, I, I would support uh, <coughs> increasing the assets by cost. Yeah, let me, let me check into that a bit more because um, the problem is, is that we don't really know what was voted on uh, some years ago because um, I'm now looking and, and it said that the, I don't know how it went from 2030 to the numbers that are on there. I think it's 34. But it definitely has not gone up anywhere near as much as the income has gone up. Um, so maybe we adopted it later. L let me do some more research on that, please. Um, but as of right now, you know, to give correct, accurate information, the asset limit of, as of today is 30000 for single and 32000 for married. It's amazing. It's only $2,000 more for a married couple. So these numbers, unfortunately, are, are set by the state of Massachusetts. Um, and the way it works, it's, it's very bizarre. Um, that's why these numbers you can't just go on a Massachusetts website or something like that. What happens is when you when a town adopts this uh, this section. So as I told you last time, was thirteen fifteen. Yeah. That is what the law says. And if we were to adopt it today, that would be the limit thirteen yeah. fifteen. But then every year after that, if you adopt the cost of living uh, adjustment every year after that, your number will go up by a percentage. So every town will have a different number. Um, and I believe that's the same. So I'm wondering now that because because my first thought was, you know, all the assets are really low, but they now that I'm looking at it, it is different. So we may have already done that, but we did it maybe much later. Yeah. So let me get back to you on that, yeah. please. I know <clears throat> last you had mentioned that it was a couple of years ago that we increased it from seven. I think it was five hundred. It was five hundred. Seven forty-four went to the thousand. actual amount last June. Uh, and it didn't have that much of an impact on the taxes. It was about 15000 I was told, uh, that the town didn't receive because of increasing it to $1,000. Oh, so. we only, so, so we get back 500 from the state. Yeah. Um, and that's the amount that we're, so it starts off at 500 according to law, but we can and did, did. increase that amount to 1000 but that's on us. Yeah. The state's yeah. not going to pay for that. No. So 500 times 32, yeah, you had 16000 16, or something 16, like that. Could you prepare for us two things? One, a proposed article that we could discuss at a meeting and fine tune it for a vote on the warrant. And also your recommendation in regards to, with some numbers of whether we keep it at 670 or we lower the Age so, so like, as I said, right now, my recommendation is to leave things the way they are. <clears throat> it's up to you. If, you. if the three of you would like to see us drop it to 65 this year, then we'll, I will write a, uh, a, an article for that, to that effect. Well, and I I may, let me research the, we may have already done, I, I assume you all agree that we should do the cost of living. Yes, on, I do. Is that correct? Yes. So let me, let me make sure that if it's not there, I will write an article to put it on there. Um, Could you also give us the, in, uh, the amount of it, loss of income to the town by going from 70 to 65? So this is what I, I was saying to you earlier, um, that we have 650 households that are currently over 70. 70 right. okay? We have 921 households that are over 65. 65. So we could say it's safe to say it goes up by 50%. Whatever number we have over 70, we should probably expect about 50% more 50%. would be over 65. Right. So if today it's the number is 32. Right. If nobody else is, is drawn in, and that's just the number, then it's going to go from 32 to 48. Right. But, but if it goes... If over if the number over seventy goes from thirty two to a, to one hundred and fifty, <laughs> you know, then it's going to go from one hundred and fifty to two hundred and twenty five. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know simply by advertising how many more people 
are going to be pulled in. Okay. I can I can tell you this. There was a number I saw, and I didn't trust it. And I let's just say I'll repeat it to the fact that I, I saw it. I don't trust it. But they said, <coughs> according to the state, there was a very low number of Dighton residents that qualified for that um, circuit breaker tax credit. It was it was less than two hundred. Mr. Mullen, if yes, we, the vote to go with the COLA, would that be a Board of yes. Selectmen vote or would that be a town meeting vote? If we were to support. So I got, so I got to admit, so like it would be a board article on town meeting. Uh, oh, you know, and these board articles are actually fairly typical to increase by uh, the COLA. I can tip it, typically, uh, these type of articles do uh, come to us by way of the Board of Assessors as well. Uh, I yeah, so like every recommendation to, uh, yeah, typically to change an exemption or to increase an exemption. So like we do usually get uh, the recommendation of the assessor, so like in the Board of Assessors, well, that's what is actually typically done in terms of uh, you know, preparing, so and actually accepting the warrant articles going into annual town meeting. So, uh, Mr. Mullen, if I may, um, do you mm -hmm. have do you have any way to historically see if we have applied this 40D for um, for the assets? Um, that would, in just my like off the top piece, Mr. Moore, like I think that would be something that Principal Assessor Schechter uh, would have access to that information way more than I would. Okay. Um. And the top of clerk as well, um, he does. He does also have a running. He has a running list. So when so when different sections and statutes so like all of, so like all of the state law were accepted by the town so like so actually that list could also point us okay to actually show when that might have been accepted as well okay that'll be an excellent resource thank you I'll, I'll try to check with him you know I think thank you, you. thank you Ms. Mullen I think you've gotten a feel that Please correct me if I'm wrong, that the Board of Selectmen is okay with a COLA increase. I mean, even though we haven't taken a vote. That, yeah, that's what I you guys said. So heard that we're all in support. Yep, of so it. I need to just check with Mr. Pacheco to see if we've actually applied it. Because like I said, there's such a disparity between the the amount of increase on the income and the amount of increase on the assets. It doesn't make sense. So um, I don't know exactly where the number came from. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Uh, Mr. Mullen, time frame. Yes, sir. When would Mr. When would we need a article, Mr. Mullen, um, to so present, get... or the Board of Assessors to present us with an article? Um, by April 12th. So later on the agenda, the. Uh... There's an agenda item for the opening of the intercoming work point uh, this evening, and uh, under that proposal and the proposed timeline that accompanies that, um, the work will be open for just over a month, and it will close on um, April 12th. Second, so I think. Um, did you know your next meeting? So this is the eighth. Next meeting, so the 22nd. 22nd. meeting the 22nd. So we have a meeting on the 22nd also. So I can probably have that done for the next Board of Assessors meeting. Uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting. So. Now, with that being said, it's the same day. Would you have? Would you like to be placed on the agenda? Yes, please. Okay. Um, and um, I will find out from uh, Clerk Pacheco if, um, if it has been applied or not. If it has, there's nothing to be done. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, the, uh, the only question for you guys is, do you want an article to drop from 70 to 65? 
my personal opinion, I agree with you, keep it at 70 for this year until mm -hmm. we get more uh, information. We need to know how many people how many might people be eligible, actually, yeah. how it's going to impact the revenue, because as we're reducing it, uh, the taxes for certain people, other people are going to be have, to right. have their uh, taxes increased. So we, we need to know what the numbers are going to be, roughly. We're, not, we're never going to get the accurate total uh, number. So I, I, I would totally rather agree. hold off on Mr. that. Mr. Garen? Yeah, I agree. It's something to consider, so, though. So what I will say is that I will then check with, with Mr. Pacheco and find out if we have this color adjustment or not. If we do, then there's nothing to be done. Right. And I, I'll uh, let you know that you don't have to have me on. Okay. okay. Thank you. Otherwise, we'll put you on the agenda for the 22nd. Okay. I, I, just, I guess I would just like to summarize by saying, you know, this whole exercise was to make sure that our seniors are being treated properly and, and given a break. Um, and I think the bottom line is, is that I think the rules are there, they're just not well known. And uh, I'm really going to make an effort to make sure, and you, I'm sure, will make an effort to try to make sure people are educated to know that these, uh, these exemptions are available to them. I appreciate it and appreciate your efforts. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Yes, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. If you could state your name for yes. the record, please. Uh, Laura Madera, 1645 Maple Street. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put my Council on Aging hat on. Bill had met with me in my office to go over all of this and to present the, the correct numbers that he had found. And I worked with him and I emailed Stephanie as well. So an item that we want to try to promote um, just to get the word out more is once I believe it's in July the numbers change um, at least with the income I know we're looking into the assets but I want to say she said July is when we'll get the updated numbers for next fiscal year um, and we want to partner with the assessor's office to do presentations like we do with police department um, we've worked with Mullen as well so we want to partner with the assessors to make um, kind of a, a like a lunch and learn type of program where they can present the um, qualifications so people will learn that way as well and hopefully we'll get some more word out in that aspect if the COA or mr. Moore would like to put together a blurb announcement if you like we can read that at board of selectmen meetings into the as announcements well during our announcement session. Absolutely. That'd be a big help as well to get the word out. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Smith has kindly requested that we change the agenda to allow Mr. Ferry and the business of the highway department that was scheduled for 725 to go prior to his presentation. Mr. Smith, thank you very much for that. With that being said, I will entertain a motion to take Mr. Ferry's presentation next on the agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. With that being said, Mr. Ferry, could you come to the podium, please? Highway Superintendent Tom Ferry will discuss uh, the appointment of Nicholas Reynolds as Highway Foreman Assistant. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so as you know, we uh, we had this need that come up as our department's growing, and uh, our department's grown quite a bit in our community. We get spread out to do multiple jobs at the same time during the same day, so supervision is stretched a little too far. So it's important to have a, a foreman assistant. And uh, Mr. Reynolds, through the interview process, came out the strongest. He's also the most senior person. Uh, he's well rehearsed in all the equipment that we have for the construction projects while our uh, existing foreman takes care of the building projects that we're taking on also. So this is going to be a, a nice asset to our department and also our community. Yes. 
Now, with the appointment as assistant highway foreman, um, does his job responsibilities change? I mean, I, I know he'll be a, in a more supervisory role, but this is a union position. So as a result, will that mean he will do less labor because no. he's going to be good, doing more good, supervision? Good question. Good question. No. He's a working foreman. He'll be a working foreman? Yes, just like our current working foreman. Yes. It's, it's, it's important for a lot of times, especially in our day and age, uh, I can't be everywhere at all times either. So in my absence, he'll be taking um, my roles as, as appointed. Thank you very much. Ms. Gannon? I have no questions. Nope. Any questions? Uh, with that being said, I will entertain a motion to appoint Nicholas Reynolds as Highway Foreman Assistant. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? It's an aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Congratulations. Congratulations. And sir. thank you for your efforts. You guys, the Highway Department, do an awesome job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a resignation from the transfer station um, that we will need to vote on. My understanding is that Mr. Lawrence has taken on a job in, in Bridgewater working at Bridgewater State University. And as a result, there will be a conflict with his duties with the town. As a result, he submitted his resignation. With that being said, and he was also the representative on the Solid Waste Committee and also the chairman. Um, Mr. Ferry, in regards to the Solid Waste Committee position, this creates a little bit of a dilemma. And that being that the member of the transfer station is the representative to the Solid Waste Committee. Do you have a plan and how you're going to deal with that? I, I, I'm not. This time. I'm sorry to put you on the spot on like that. But yeah. I, when I drew up the working with Mrs. Katavia, we put positions in, not people. Right. So it wasn't appointing Jonathan as a member of Solid Waste. It was a representative of the transfer station to solid waste. I, I would, I would think, since I'm already on the board, the solid waste committee. I'm sorry, uh, and your board and the board of health appointed me as a representative to the transfer station. That would suffice. So, as far as how you fill that vacancy, I, I think you, that could be re rethought. Okay. I mean, I know you are going to fill that position with someone. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be curious, at, if you could, at the next Solid Waste Committee, of getting a recommendation and how you would would like to see that position fill. Sure. Um, you know, unless you have a recommendation at this time. Nope. I'll give you the, I know I put you on the spot on that, but yep. it's just there's certainly something to think about it, is how we're we going to fill that extra spot. Right. Right, and it, we, yes, it's, we have some time to think about it. It's, it can be easily added to the agenda. Um, it, the committee's done a lot in the last f few months. A lot of the groundwork is done. Um, it might be a good opportunity to look at the size of the committee, too. It might not be as large as it has. I'd like to keep it an odd number mm -hmm. for voting purposes so we don't have ties. Right. So if you could, I mean... I personally don't have a problem with it, the committee getting smaller, but just keep that, you know, an odd number rather than 
having ties, the potential for ties on voting on issues. Mr. Karen, any questions? No. Uh, the problem is, is not everybody shows up at every meeting. Correct. So even if it was an odd number, it could end up by being an even number just because of the amount of people that show up. Okay. I'm not 100% sure he needs to be replaced. I think with Mr. Ferry um, as a representative now for the transfer station, I don't think it has to be anybody from the transfer station that, that fills Jonathan's role. Mr. Pacheco? I'll let the uh, Solid Waste Committee uh, make that call. Could, would it be okay if Solid Waste discussed it and came back with a recommendation to us? We're I think that would be the, the only fair way to do it, just so people from sol uh, Solid Waste would have an opportunity to have some input rather than just the Board of Selectmen making a ruling. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to accept the letter of resignation with thanks and appreciation of Jonathan Lawrence as transfer station attendant and solid waste committee chairman. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Chico? Aye. aye. Mr. Karen? It's an aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. And Mr. Mullen, your office will send Mr. Lawrence a letter thanking him for his services and involvement. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Next on the agenda, um, Chairman of the Community Preservation Committee, Kevin Smith, is coming before us this evening to give us an update on the Community Preservation Committee's in general or just in regards to the library? In general, all the things. Great. Um, so first off, thank you for continuing to put me on the agenda. I can't wait for warmer weather where I spend my Wednesday nights golfing instead of with you guys, but it's been a pleasure. Um, so I wanted to give a quick update because, it, and I mean this in the best possible way, the CPC is facing unprecedented times where we have had this spotlight shined on us um, with the 207 uh, Main Street project. Um, I myself, before I got involved, you know, with Parks and Rec and the CPC, um, when I, I know when I did the North Titan Playground, everybody said you need to go to the CPC um, for funding, and I thought like CPC sounded like a chemical that I didn't want in my water bottle. I had no idea what it was. So we have a unique opportunity to reach um, a bunch of individuals in the community, and we've got. Um, a significant amount of outreach on this particular project, um, you know, both in in support or in or not supporting the project. Um, so I just wanted to get a little bit more information out there because some of the input that we're receiving is kind of has some misconstrued information or views of the CPC, you know, funds in general, and then to how the CPC works. So I had sent over in the meeting packet. I did a full um, funding analysis of the CPC. So I wanted to break it out of um, the spreadsheet because I think, you know, for the public to look at that, the spreadsheet can be confusing. There's a lot of numbers on there and a lot of times a lot of things don't add up. So I, I cleaned it up. So we have, you know, just in plain print, these are our current fund balances. So I broke it up, our unreserved fund um, at $422,398.51. The open space recre and, and recreation fund is 53,376.87. Our historic resources fund is 35,876.87. And community housing is $38,376.87. So that shows us what we have in undesignated and we can use for any of the categories and then what we have allocated for each individual um, category as well. I also broke down too because we were getting a lot of questions of I'd like to see CPC fund this or I'd like to see CPC fund that instead. Um, so CPC was adopted you know, 10 years ago, roughly 10 years ago, maybe a little more than 10 years ago. So I went through and um, to the best of my ability, I listed every project that the CPC has funded since it was um, accepted in Dayton and what um, funding source we used for those projects with the exception of, I think, the last 
three were uh, they're a little bit older um i didn't have access to the town meeting records um you know via the town website and i haven't had a chance yet we're working on actually creating digital copies of past applications that are in our file cabinet so like we have it for our records we haven't had a chance to totally clean that up um but i went down the list most of them and i put whether or not they're in progress or they completed um, so total to date, the CPC over over the last 10 years has um, funded $873,348 worth of projects in the town of Dighton um, by a pretty vast majority that has gone to open space or recreation projects and primarily recreation projects. Um, we've had two small land acquisitions that were part of that, um, one being the Elm Street agricultural restriction. Um, and then the uh, Brook Street, um, there was a small land acquisition on Brook Street as well. Um, so those are the only two like true open space acquisitions that the CPC has funded. Everything else has been improvements to recreation facilities or building of, of a recreation, recreation facility. Um, so over the years, it's been $503,000 of open space or recreation projects. Um, and then next, we have historical um, resources projects. So we funded $234,067 in the historical column. And then for community housing, $136,281. There has only been in the 12 years of CPC one community housing project that's been, I don't, I don't know about presented, but that has been funded, you know, you know gone through the CPC and a warrant article passed to fund um, a community housing project. Um, so again, I just did a little quick pie chart of all the 800 plus thousand dollars, 57.6% has gone to open space and rec, 26.8 to historical and 15.6 to housing. So I just wanted to show that graphic because it shows really over the years what the CPZ has been used for and kind of clear up some of the the feedback that we're getting for residents that we think it should be used for this versus that. So it has just wanted to give a clear picture of where the funds have gone in the past. Um, um, the second thing I sent over to you um, was my little fact sheet. What is CPA? I'm not going to read through this whole thing because I don't want to keep you here all night. Um, we're going to, I'm. we're going to, you know, hopefully we can, Figure, get a way to put this on the town's Facebook page because I think it would be helpful. Um, I'm also going to have our our um, CPC clerk upload this to our CPC website on the um, town website. All of this information is available on the town website, but it's in a million different places. We have a little bit on ours. I pulled some of it from the assessors, some of it from the treasurer collector. So you can find all this information, but it was not in one place. So it's extremely confusing. Um, so I just wanted to break it down. I, I have information about when we adopted CPC, what the surcharge is, how I broke it down, you know, how it affects the taxes. One thing I will talk about briefly is, um, cause we, we've had a couple questions. Why would I participate in something that raises my taxes? On average, um, taking the median house value or median assessed value of houses in Dighton, it costs the average Dighton taxpayer about forty-one dollars a year to participate for us to participate in, in in CPA. So it's a very small ask annually that's funded almost a million dollars worth of you know some really great projects throughout the town. Um, like I did, I did, I put a quick note in here that you know de depending on your property's assessed value, it costs the average Dighton resident. Um, who doesn't qualify for an exemption. There are also low income exemptions that are part of it, um, somewhere between 35 and $45 a year, just to give a general overview of what it, what it <coughs> costs each person. I think the biggest part of this, and this is something that I really wanna broadcast, and we're gonna spend a tremendous amount of time on this as the, the CPC committee itself. We have our annual public um, meeting. Um, in May, it's got that our May, regular May meeting on the third Thursday of May. We're gonna um, open that up and really do as much as we can to get promote um, public interaction to come out and and really drive home this portion of it, the chart of allowable spending purposes. Um, because another thing is part of this is 
and, and all of these projects that are, are being talked about are, are very valid projects and val very valid concerns by residents. But when we're talking about, you know, fire stations, schools, a lot of these things that, you know, do need to be addressed, they're not CPC eligible. So I just want to, um, you know, do our due diligence as a committee to make this more readily available to the public so they understand better. I do, like, I have to thank my wife because I use my wife as my crash test dummy for this. I'm the CPC chair. I talk about the CPC more than I should at the dinner table. And she still was like, I don't know what you do, how it works, or whatever. So I, I did this whole, um, you know, kind of Q&A, and I had her read it, and she was like, it makes, you know, for her, it made a lot more sense. Um, so, you know, I invite, you know, yourselves and you know you utilizing the town facebook page if we can spread this information i think it would be helpful um in just addressing some of the questions that are being asked as part of the projects that are presented to us um another big thing that i just want to clarify as well is a lot of people are saying i well i'd like to see cpc fund open space I'd like to see CPC fund open space. The CPC's job, though, is not to go out and look for open space to purchase. That needs to come from the Conservation Commission, or you know, it could come from the Board, Board of Selectmen. It could come from a number of different people, but it's not Open Space Committee. Um, so it's it's not our job to seek projects. It's our job to review the eligibility and and the possibility of funding them. Um, one kind of note I'll make about open space projects is we all know how tremendously expensive land is. And I, I think an, one big part of what's presented to us now with the 207 Main Street Library, library project is how it's going to affect our overall funds and the uh, kind of feeling that it's going to handcuff the CPC in some way. If we do get to the point where we're talking about a land acquisition, I mean, we all know how expensive land is. And then we're getting into a conversation about bonding CPC funds. And uh, we've talked about this briefly before in our, in our previous meetings. Um, we've even had public input about it. S nothing is going to handcuff the CPC worse than bonding a project. Um, it's not something that I think in a town this size um, would be a great idea, unless it was something that every single member of town was like, we absolutely have to have this, then we'd have to figure out a way to do it. But it, it's, it, it wouldn't be a good practice um, to bond it. Uh, the significant land purchase. Um, so that's like the biggest thing is I just kind of wanted to put this information out there. I put links to our, um, the CPC town website, the community preservation coalition website, and then just a small little message towards the end here was how can I get involved? So I just wanted to make it clear that as a town resident, you're always welcome to participate in any and all CPC meetings. Um, if you'd like to get involved in an official capacity, just please check the Town of Dighton website for volunteer opportunities where you can apply for an at-large member position when vacancies arise. Or if you're a member representative of a board or committee, ask your fellow members to consider you for a future term. Um, we're uh, moving in a little bit different direction, I think, than the CPC is used to. It's It's got a lot of attention, and I think it's a great thing. Um, to allow people to, to interact with us. I remember not too long ago when I presented the, for the first time the North Dayton Playground Project, I brought a group of people because I thought that's what you were supposed to do and I got told that I don't need to bring all these people to these meetings, but it's it's all of our money. Um, and I, you know, I welcome, I, it was great, I thought, at our last meeting to see this room full of people, you know, whether they're for or against the project. It, we can't make a valid decision without the community's input. So it's not the job of the seven of the current seven of us to make that decision on behalf of the community. So um, I just want to thank everybody for sending in their letters of support or opposition because we appreciate it. It helps us um, make an informed decision on behalf of the town. Great. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, do you have any questions? No. I think it's a great job. There's just a clarification on the Winslow Davis house uh, renovations. Uh, we had asked for 125,000. I represented the Titan Historical Society mm -hmm. in the Winslow uh, Davis house uh, renovations. We asked for $125,000 to 
CPC recommended $125,000. The residents approved $125,000. The Dighton Historical Society spent, spent less than $100,000. So we were conscious of the monies, taxpayers' mm -hmm. money, and we did not spend $25,000 of that money. So Yes. Oh, I should note that. That is a good point because on a couple different fronts, this is showing what the Warren articles funded. Right. It is not showing what was expended um, on, on each project. I mean, uh, the same thing goes for the couple current pro parks projects. We're under budget. We're going to. Yep. Um, and we're also navigating that, too, so we can make sure that the money goes back into these accounts when it's not utilized as well. That's another um, agenda item for us next week as well, prior, besides the uh, <clears throat> 207 Main Street project. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that, how we can close out these accounts and get some money back into yep. into their respective places. One thing I do want to note, and it doesn't affect the balances that I showed, um, but um, Pat Gales from the Historical Commission did reach out to me. on For the FY23 Historical Survey Phase 2, I had put a note in there that 50% state reimburse reimbursement upon completion. They actually were denied that. It doesn't affect the, the balances that we're showing, but it's just a um, 12,500 that we <laughs> won't see go back into the historical fund once that's completed, but that's already funded and it doesn't affect the current fund balances at all, but just to uh, be transparent about where those things stand when where we will not see that, so I can strike that out of this graphic before our next CPC meeting, that way it's recorded properly. I do have one question. Sure. Regarding funding project over multiple years, does the CPC have anything in their bylaws in regards to it? So there's nothing specifically in the bylaws, but if we can, you you could you could do it in you could do it in phases. You could do it over you know a course of you know we could do just that. So if we wanted to do a hundred thousand per year on something, you could. Um, there's also a much larger kind of logistical approach to uh, bonding a project if it was doing it that way. We also have the ability, and this is just something to throw out there too. So we always fund, to, and I have a note in there about like yearly, we always designate that 10% to the three categories and then the 5% for administrative. We, that's a minimum. So if we say we have our public, if when we have our pub, annual public meeting, if a ton of residents come out and say, you know, I'd really like to see you designate a little bit more money towards community housing or towards open space, we could fund, we could put 20% in that. You still have to do the 10 in the other, and all it's going to do is affect the undesignated reserve, unreserved balance. Okay. So it will reduce that. But if they're like, you know, people are really passionate about us, you know, trying to kind of build up a nest egg to fund other projects, we can do that at annual town meeting by... Um, adjusting that article to be, you know, 20, maybe 30% for open space, 10% for historic, 10% for community. So we can make that we would vote on that, you know. At town meeting. Well, what we would have, we would vote, or well, we would produce, vote and produce that Warren article okay. on the CPC and then it would go to town meeting for the people to approve. Okay. So we do have that ability to, to adjust and plan accordingly to kind of build up a little bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> safety net for, for different categories if we wanted to. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any further questions? No. Mr. Smith, thank you very no, much. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for all your efforts for the town of Dayton. Thank you. Uh, with that being said, um, next on the agenda is the contract of employment for Library Director Jocelyn Tavares. Earlier this evening, in executive session, the Board of Selectmen reviewed a contract for the Library Director. And this three-year contract um, will now be voted in open session for its approval. Um, with that being said, 
is there any discussion in regards to the contract? No, we discussed this in the executive session. Mr. Karen? No, I have no uh, further comments. We've discussed. That being said, I will entertain a motion to approve the contract, I believe it's a three-year contract, with Jocelyn Tavares for the position of library director. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Aye. Chico. Aye. Mr. Karen. Is an aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda um, is announcements. I'll read the announcements. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please note that the town-wide parking ban is still in effect through April 1st, 2023. No person shall park a motor vehicle on any street between the hours of 12 midnight and 6 a.m. The Town of Dighton's Food Bank distribution will be held next on March 18th, 2023. Located at Town Hall, 979 Somerset Avenue, lower level. The Friends of the Dighton Library will be holding the annual Youth Candidate Night. The candidates running in the upcoming annual town election. This event will take place on Monday, March 27th, 2023. 7 p.m. at Dighton Middle School. The Dighton Historical Society, I'm a member of the Dighton Historical Society, just so the public knows. The Dighton Historical Society is sponsoring a program called Believe in Forever with Mary Catherine Volk on Sunday, March 26, 2023 at Old Town Hall, this building. Uh, this event will take place, uh, nope, excuse me, on 1111 Somerset Avenue at 2 p.m. Absentee ballot applications are available for the Saturday, April 8, 2023, annual town elections. Absentee ballots are available in person at the town clerk's office or the Secretary of State's website and the town of Dighton's website. Use, use the search bar and type absentee ballot applications. It's my understanding the town clerk will be uh, open on Friday April 7th until noontime for people who want to come in for the absentee ballots. The Board of Selectmen is seeking applications from Dighton residents interested in filling the position of sewer commissioner for the rest of the current term through April of 2025. Residents are encouraged to apply through the town website on Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. That's all the announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. Town Administrator's Report, Mr. Mullen. Hey, yes, sir. Just, um, so as I've been mentioning, probably that is not up yet. Um, the, one second, I just want to make sure. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I thought I was on you for one second. Um, so, um, so we um, are actually wrapping up as we speak um, our internal uh, budget review process. And um, actually, since the last meeting, um, when we mentioned uh, the um, um, that a new what we're building as a one-stop shop um, for the department, boards, and committees, uh, with joint meeting between the board of selectmen and the think farm, uh, when we initially set out uh, with this plan, we had um, an initial uh, schedule to begin actually on um, uh, that would begin uh, next Thursday, the 16th. Um, that has been, been pushed back. So the joint uh, budget meetings between the selecting and the think column um, will now be taking place on Tuesday, March 21st, Thursday, March 23rd, and Tuesday, March 28th. And um, so those will be the initial uh, budget review meetings that uh, the board of selectmen will be having uh, with the think column, and, and I hope to um, streamline and make the process more efficient. 
right? Um, um, and together um, with our departments, uh, with our financial team, um, and especially the current accountant and I, we've been, um, oh, you know, we're opening up our federal process and, um, and things are coming together. Um, uh, we, as we've expected, uh, like for the last, um, actually since we um, ended last year's budget process, uh, the FY24 budget uh, is a very tight this budget. Uh, we've had to look very, very, very closely, diligently, and carefully at our revenue to make uh, targeted adjustments there. Uh, but uh, like at this point, I don't actually see any overarching concerns I'm going into FY24. So, um, and so that is all I have at the moment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just that the um, Oh, you know, the budget process is moving along. <coughs> and, and in a week or in a week or two we can really start the oh you know, a really public process that would bring us uh from now to town meeting as well. Mr. Mullen, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mullen? No. Mr. Pacheco? Mr. Cameron? No. Um Selectman's report. Mr. Pacheco, do you have anything? Sure. I've got Any questions? Disability just met uh, last Thursday, and one of the things that they discussed was the uh, application for a the rural library grant. Uh, this is a twenty thousand dollar grant. Jonathan Gale, who was present earlier, our ADA coordinator, uh, worked with Jocelyn Tavares, our library uh, director, to apply for this grant. And this grant will uh, assist us in our the new library. It will uh, provide. Uh, if we get the grant for $20,000, it will help us with money for the, have an electric door for the exterior of the building, an electric door for one of the uh, bathrooms. It would also uh, give us about $4,900 towards the ramp that's going to be used to uh, assist the children to go to their, uh, the second floor, the uh, stage area. The total amount is $20,000. It's also going to help us with, uh, with people with disabilities to be able to use a computer and able to help them with sign language and other stuff. So it's, it's a grant that we're hoping that we get. Uh, we did apply for it and uh, I think we're gonna, we'll have an answer in May. It's my understanding. So but that's basically what the, uh, they discussed other things, but the grant was the biggest thing that we discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Karen? Uh, we were supposed to meet on Monday, but uh, we decided not to, uh, mainly because of the budgets. With Jonathan leaving, it changes the complexity of the budgets. And we thought that um, given, given what was going on with him, as well as replacing him with somebody from the town highway department uh, in those negotiations, we thought it was best to wait a month, I mean a week. So our next meeting will be this coming Monday. Now, so you will be amending your budget request to Mr. Mullen? Is that right. Well, we haven't done the, the, the budget request was going to be this Monday, but we didn't have uh -oh. this uh, two days ago. Okay. But we haven't done it yet. We're, we're going to recommend this Monday. Okay. Up. Thank you. Um, I've got several items. First thing I, I want to do um, is clarify something that I did not do when we were approving uh, the library director's contract. And that was, I failed to mention the terms of that contract in regards to the length of employment. The contract shall begin on March 8th, 2023 and will run till June 30th, 2027. In regards to the school department, at the last school department meeting, the school committee was able to reduce their budget from $50 million to $45 million. They will obviously be submitting their final numbers to FinCom and the Board of Selectmen, and we will review it and probably pare it down some more. Unfortunately, those cuts included six teaching 
positions. How many? Six. Six. Superintendent Rooney admitted that those staffing cuts were influenced not only by revenues and expenses, um, and unfortunately the expenses were greater than the revenues, but also, and very important to note, a decrease in enrollment. And I know that the assessments of BP and Bristol Aggie School have increased because many of those students who left DR went to BP and Bristol Aggie. And the cost for those students is greater than the cost to attend DR. The school department was, however, able to provide some funding to the hockey program and full funding to the lacrosse program, which both programs have been parent funded for a number of years. The school department also disclosed that they will be returning $504,000 in E&D funds to the town. Regarding the Dighton Water District, the annual election for water commissioner at the Dighton Water District for the term of three years will be held on Monday, May 15, 2023 from noon to 7 p.m. at the Dighton Water District Treatment Facility located at 192 Williams Street, North Dighton, Mass. Anyone wishing to be placed on the ballot must fill out a request to be placed on the ballot form at the Dighton Water District office beginning March 6, 2023. The deadline for submitting those applications is April 10th. The annual district meeting will be held May 25th, 2023. The location of that meeting is not mentioned However, it's usually held at the Dighton Middle School. And the next water district meeting is tomorrow, Thursday, March 9th at 9 a.m. Now, I have a couple additional things that I'd like to address in regards to the library project. On social media, there has been a great deal of misinformation and discussion where groups in this community have accused elected officials as well as a political group of advocating a ban on books. Let me be perfectly clear to all Dighton residents that no one in the RTC or in Dighton government is calling for the banning of any books at the Dighton Public Library. The Constitution, Mass General Law, and the Library Board of Trustees have made it perfectly clear that this is not going to happen. Will there be some regulating, regulation, regulating of Materials, cycling of materials, yes. And that will take place according to the guidelines by the state of Massachusetts, not at the women fancy of the Board of Trustees. I believe the chairman of the library trustees made that perfectly clear in an open meeting. In addition, Employees of the town of Dighton have both a contractual right and a legal right to work in a hostile, free work environment. Staff do not set policy and do not select the books that are in the library, nor does the administrative assistants who work in the Board of Selectmen's office. I am asking that we continue to exemplify Dighton's creed of a small town with a big heart. 
The issue of the library is one that we need to work together as a community to come to a consensus on what is in the best interest of the people of the town of Dighton. The final say will be by vote of the people on June 5th at the town meeting. I am hoping that these discussions will, con will be amicable and that they will be fruitful debates. And some of the hostility that has been expressed publicly as well as in social media will come to an end. This does not help to bring this town together. It helps to divide it. Thank you. Is there any old business? No? Uh, new business. Review, discuss, and act the open warrant for annual town meeting. Mr. Mullen. I just want to share my screen real quick. Um, so I want to let you know the um, so, um, so right now, following the schedule um, that has, has typically been followed pending the town meeting, um, with the proposed schedule uh, that's been presented before the board this evening, um, I we're recommending that the board um, take action this evening on March 8th. 2023 to open the annual town meeting warrant. Um, the warrant under this proposed timeline would be open uh, from now, March 8, 2023, um, to the close of business on April 20, on uh, April 12th, 2023. Um, um, I is expected um, and proposed under this um, under this schedule that um, that the selectmen would vote to place. Uh, the articles on the warrant uh, by April 26, uh, 2023, um, and then from thereafter, um, we would be able to um, um, send a draft warrant at the legal uh, the town council for review. Um, the recommendation process between um, the selectmen and the FinCom would continue um, for approximately just over the next uh, two weeks thereafter, and. Um, uh, with the signing of the warrant uh, on or about uh, May 10th, 2023, um, and then the final posting of the warrant um, in accordance with the Town of Dighton General Bylaws um, on May 22nd, uh, which would be in advance of the uh, uh, the June 5th, 2023 annual town meeting, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mullen, thank you. Um, I want. Thank you. Are there any questions? No. I will entertain a motion to open the warrant for the annual town meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Cameron? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Uh, Mr. Mullen, could you update us on the proposed annual town meeting warrant timeline? Um, so, um, so, uh, yeah, I just actually did, um, uh, in terms of just the timeline uh, for the warrant as the warrant will be open, and uh, then the uh, the dates and the targets that would take us from now to town meeting, Mr. Chairman, if you have any questions or, uh, or want anything further out, I'd be happy to do that as well. Uh, are there any questions in regards to... Um, the deadlines as proposed or any questions or concerns in regard in regards to our um, approval process no no are there any dates that could create a problem uh, with vacations or other commitments I don't believe no? so I think I plugged everything in I'm sorry so I believe I plugged everything in before okay no thank you very much 
Would so one of the things I just want to quickly clarify, if it's okay, um, Alec, is the March 10th, 2023, I tied date of, of signing the warrant. Um, that is really a private date. We do have a little bit of flexibility there. Um, actually, last year, um, at that point, we did utilize that flexibility just because of the budget process. But that date of May 10th, that does have a little bit of a flexibility to it. Mr. Mullen, thank you very much. Um, I will entertain a motion to accept the proposed annual town meeting warrant timeline. I'll make that motion. Second. <laughs> motion made and second. Uh, all those in favor, Ms. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Next on the agenda, review and discuss and act the contract of employment of town administrator Mike Mullen. Last meeting, we discussed the evaluation of Mr. Mullen. And overall, his performance has been exemplary. A very, very hard working and dedicated man to this community. And as we said earlier, employees who show that type of dedication should be rewarded for their efforts. Um, with that being said, we met in executive session this evening to approve or to recommend for approval in public session a contract for Michael P. M Mullen, Jr., town administrator, for the term of employment to begin July 1st, 2023, and end on June 30th, 2026. This agreement amends and replaces the prior employment contract between the town of Dighton and the town administrator, effective July 1st, 2023. Is there any questions or concerns? No, I just want to comment that Mr. Mullen uh, started two years ago today and uh, we appreciate, uh, I appreciate all the work that he has done. I'm sure all the residents in town appreciate the hard work that he's done for this town. Mr. Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. Uh, actually, uh, ditto to what Mr. Pacheco just said. I think he's an outstanding uh, uh, representative of our, of our town. Thank you very much. With that said, I will entertain a motion to approve the contract of employment of Michael P. Mullen, Jr., as town administrator. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? It's an aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. Now, um, we have before us two memorandums of understanding with the Clerical Library and Council on Aging Union. And with that being said, um, I'm going to ask for approval of these memorandums uh, of understanding. Um, I would like to take um, a side letter of agreement by and between the town of Dighton with Lisa Tetrall and the Dighton Clerical Library and Council on Aging Union first. Um, the assessor's office has someone on medical leave. And we met in executive session earlier this evening to review the terms of allowing Mrs. Tetrault to fill in or actually move up. Um, she is the senior clerk for the assessor's office and to move into the assistant assessor's position until such time 
as that employee returns. Um, are there any questions? No. no. With that being said, I will entertain a motion to approve the side letter of agreement by and between the town of Dighton, Lisa Tetro, and the Dighton Clerical Library and Council on Aging Union. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Cameron? Is an aye. Chairman Ho is also an aye. In the town clerk's office, we have also had a member, assistant town clerk, is out on medical leave. And with that event, it is necessary to provide Mr. Mark Pacheco with additional assistance, especially with an election coming up and the annual town meeting. Are there any questions in regards to the um, promoting of Rebecca Mello to fill in um, at the town clerk's office? I have no questions. No. I will entertain a motion to approve the updated side letter of agreement by and between the town of Dighton, Rebecca Mello, and the Dighton Clerical Library and Council on Aging Union. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Karen? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is also an aye. Um, we have before us this evening a donation of $3,360 to the Affordable Housing Fund. Um, do I have a motion to approve this donation? I'll make that motion. Second. On October 26, 2022, the Zoning Board of Appeals voted unanimously to accept the donation of $3,360 to the Affordable Housing Fund from Sony Ridge Estates for failing to comply with the requirements set forth in Condition 23 in Exhibit B of the Comprehensive Permit. Um, enclosed for your convenience is the appropriate minutes attached in regarding this matter. With that being said, I have a motion to approve this donation. Uh, all those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hull is also an aye. Mr. Mullen, next on the agenda is review and discuss and act junk dealers license fees. Um, yes. So, um, so like as so like as the so so like as the board um, remembers, uh, I'm just pulling actually up um, this information as the board of remembers. Um, so actually last fall, uh, the board adopted um, actually junk dealers licensing guidelines. Um, in accordance um, uh, with the town general bylaw uh, that requires the other uh, licensing of junk dealers within the town of Dighton, and uh, uh, within those guidelines, the uh, the uh, the license fee um, was uh, then uh, listed and prescribed at two hundred fifty dollars. Um, we have actually since. Uh, gone back and we looked at that um, at that uh, at that license fee just to really make sure we were quantifying um, the expenses that would actually go in to that individual license fee for um, oh you know for applicants who who seek a junk dealer license in town and um, and um, the like uh, actually. Um, like as a result of that, um, 
uh, to the work, especially uh, to the work of Ms. Brady, um, we like actually better quantify the real uh, like in projected costs. So, so all of this licensing endeavor um, uh, um, to be like actually one hundred and seventy five dollars per uh, licensed applicant. So, like, if the board um, would be willing to change and reduce um, the license fee per applicant uh, from $250 uh, to $175, um, that one's $175, um, as I mentioned, does reflect more of a real cost to the town. So, in terms of advertising in the top gazette, um, and also the required auto notification um, and the cost of that that would be required as well. So, um, I and uh, yeah, we have I have I have heard a question by members of the board uh, that the board might be interesting uh, interested in reducing that number. Um, and so I just wanted to update uh, the board with that information for your consideration. Um, and I also, as I mentioned, I do want to thank Ms. Brady for, uh, for her work in this as well. Ms. Pacheco, any questions? No. Mr. Cameron, any yeah, questions? Yeah, what about the soft cost of, like, having an inspector go out? Uh, is that included in the 175? Um, I, yes, that, I, yes, that is included. Um, I, you know, I have, um, I, I have to share that it's minimally included. Yep. Um, but it is included. Uh, yeah, one of the things, because this is a new licensing process selection, Jared, and if we don't have some really trends in terms of time, I uh, can baseline that I uh, can really reflective of, you know, what will actually be entailed now and in the future. So uh, as we really build that baseline, uh, you know, there may in the future ones we have that real time and trend information. Uh, like we might have reason to increase it in the future based on that information. Okay. Uh, but right now, because it's a new process, um, uh, yeah, the 175 would incorporate a very small part of this time. Uh, uh, but we will look to uh, future times and trends based on that. I'll get to inform any future adjustments. Okay. Uh, no other questions. I, I have some questions in regards to it. First, what is the definition of a junkyard? The, I just, I just want to pull up that one, one minute. The, so, and, um, in terms of a, a junk, a junk, um, here, a junk dealer's license would be required for every person who is in the practice of collecting, dealing in, or keeping a shop for the purchase, for the purchase, or the sale, the resale, or barter of junk, old and precious metals, and or secondhand objects. <coughs> and what is the difference between? A junk dealer and someone having a yard sale. Dealer and someone keeping of the shop would be a different. A yard, a, a yes, it's a keeping of the shop and up uh, and using that shop specifically for the purchase, sale, resale. So there would have to be a shop or. Just um, having items well they could, out in, so they could, in a general area for more than 24 hours, if you will. So um, how that would be interpreted, in my opinion, it would be the keeping of a shop or someone who is in the practice of, uh, 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 you know, Oh, you know, of collecting such materials for the purchase, or the sale, uh, in the resale or barter of, and uh, like, uh, that language actually comes specifically from the town of Dighton General Five. 
Okay. No, thank you. That was, that was very important. So I, I do have a question sure. then. Would that include like antique shops that are selling secondhand stuff? Um, this would be uh, uh, also a question for the building uh, commissioner and also uh, by the board uh, like, as a licensing authority, but a very general, just my interpretation now, would say probably yes, but we could interpret that further. Thank you. Now, this hundred and seventy-five dollar fee. Yes, sir. Is this a one-time fee? Is this a every annual fee? The it would. How these guidelines are written is the is each license shall be issued on location on a location specific basis and shall be for a period of one year unless sooner revoked by the board of art, by the board of art, by the board of selectmen. So based on the typical licensing in the relicensing process, um, this would uh, follow the same process where um, relicensed uh, um, fees are actually charged to all entities so upon um, uh, you know, a renewal of every license. Is there a provision for a claim of hardship? Uh, not at this time, Chip. We haven't had any public discussion other than this evening on a fee structure. Based on our discussion this evening, I wonder, do we need to vote on this this evening? Are you under a time deadline? Um, we have Ms. Brady when? Um, um, if we, uh, on the site, it's actually up here when we specify yes. that we would, um, so, uh, we did in the notification because this licensing process would run uh, every year based on the state statute from May 1st to April 30th. Um, so in the <coughs> notification that we have sent out, uh, we have respectfully requested that license applications, um, and I would interpret that to be a lot of fees, um, be returned to the Board of Selectmen's Office and no later than the close of business on um, March 23rd. So these, app uh, so these applications already went out? Uh, because of the need to schedule full and advertise the public hearing, yes, but we did um, uh, but we did also note, Mr. Chairman, in that letter um, that uh, we specified, you will note that the current fee is $250. Um, and then we said the Board of Selectmen uh, will be considering whether to adjust this fee in the coming weeks. So how will these people be notified that there's a change in fee? And also, there's no public input feedback to us whether we agree with this fee structure, whether it be one year, three year. And the fact that it went out before our approval is troubling. So, so we have to uh, work and plan based on the policies and guidelines that were approved. And based on what was approved in the, in the licensing uh, 
and the licensing uh, when the licensing would be in effect from, from May 1st to April 30th of every year. So backing that up to give the board and the applicant uh, the time to consider the, the license applications, but also, and then backing that up further uh, to deal with the public hearing requirements and the, and the legally required posting in the in Gazette that um, really brings us out oh, yeah, to needing to do that now to hear uh, to the guidelines that were approved by the board in October. This is March 8th. Yes. I'd be curious yes. to hear what the public has to say about this fee structure. Um, um, so, if, so if I could, based on, so based on our cost to the town to do the advertising, I like hand the abutters notification. So like, in, and, and also the personnel for the inspections so that in accordance uh, with um, the license process um, that has been enacted, our real cost our uh, $175. Um, uh, what we do in future years and, and how we can manage in future years, I do think we have, oh, you know, we have time because we're only dealing with the here and now and this year. Uh, but if the board, and, and I'm just actually going to share my screen um, again really quickly. Uh, but, it, uh, but if the board uh, 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 wanted to entertain um, act, uh, actually commending uh, um, um, like commending this um, this sentence right here because that is really what is driving the discussion uh, to reflect the real cost to the town um, at um, at, uh, at 175 at, at, and then further amend the policy based on the comments this evening um, to add a comma after the word notification uh, to just say say unless waived by the board of selectmen um, we could I think accomplish uh, uh, what has also been discussed this evening I personally like that a lot I'm not sure how my colleagues feel but you know we're trying to be one business friendly and two, you know, some of these people are running junk businesses that are very small and mimic very much like a yard sale, um, not making great deal of profits on these. So I was wondering if there was support for an amendment to this. I would like to know from Miss Brady, how many of these letters went out? Four. Four? So we're talking just four. Uh, and the amendment's going to add that the board can waive the fee. Is that what you're saying? Is that the amendment? Yes. So. Um, I got actually invited um, in the screen, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one second, sorry. So, um, so what I just mentioned, uh, we're on page two of the current approved guidelines. Uh, we are the board to entertain Changing 250 to 175, mm -hmm. 
And then at the very end of that sentence, um, I add a, I add a, I add a condition uh, uh, after the notification uh, that says like unless waived by uh, the uh, by the board of select. Why, why would the selectman waive the fee? I mean, I can see dropping it to 175, but why do we have to have waive the fee in there? Because now you're going to give somebody the idea that they can come in and apply for a, a waiver, and, and then what are we going to get into? Hardship. One person gets it, one person doesn't get it. And I agree with that. Because if we do waive it for one person, then it's actually costing the town more than 175 right. for the other three, so we'd be increasing theirs, basically. So I, I'm, obviously, anybody can come before the board and ask fee to be waived or whatever, but uh, I don't think we should set that as our policy. We're talking about four, uh, and I don't know these individuals, maybe you do, I don't know these uh, in individual junk uh, uh, shops. Uh, but I'm not, I, I think we ought to leave it as is, but I'm in favor of reducing it to 175. I think that's a reasonable, we're talking four uh, places. I agree. Would you like to put that in a form of motion? I'll make a motion that we reduce the fee, uh, current fee, which is 250 to 175. Second that. Motion made and second. All those in favor, Ms. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Ho is an aye. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda, um, Southeast Regional Service Group DPW Service Awards for March 1st, 2023 to February 29, 2024. Now, is it necessary to read each item, or can we? Yeah, what I uh, review. Uh, what I recommend is that the board. Ah, uh, yeah, there's no requirement to read each item. Uh, uh, what I recommend in the form of a motion is that the board of selectmen vote to award are the DPW services for a 12-month period as proposed and procured by the Southeastern Regional Services Group. I will entertain a motion. The Board of Selectmen of Dighton hereby authorize the award of contracts to the bidders listed below under the Sursig DPW Services IFB for a 12-month period commencing March 1st, 2023 and running to February 29th, 2024. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? It's an aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Thank you. Review, discuss, and act the annual permit renewal Taunton Yacht Club, 2125 Water Street, Dighton, Mass. Um, this is an annual permitting fee. Have there been any um, concerns expressed by any of the inspection groups in regards to this? I see that the fire captain, fire chief has approved this request. Um, is the Taunton Yacht Club in good standing with the treasurer's office and owe any fees to any government I can speak agency? To Thank you. So, yes, they're currently in good standing with the town. Um, they've been inspected by the fire department. Captain Gagley has given his okay and the fire chief has signed off on the inspection. Um, all that's left for him to do is pick up this permit and take it to the fire station and get his state permit. We approval. We wish you that tomorrow to him. Carry on. Awesome. Ms. Brady, thank you very much. With that being said, I will entertain a motion to approve the annual FP2 permit renewal of the Taunton Yacht Club. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Chico? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. 
Chairman Hall is an eye. Review, discuss, and act highway department surplus equipment for disposal. Wild game camera serial number 0661-0661-0448929. Manufacture date 6811. <coughs> Wild camera serial number 0661-0611. 043209, manufacture date 6 8 2011. Wild game camera, serial number 0256 149 manufacture date 907. Wild game camera, serial number 0256 196 Manufacture date 907. Wild game serial, wild game camera serial 0256 091 Manufacture date 909. I'll entertain a motion to approve the highway department surplus equipment request for disposal. I'll make that motion. Motion. Second. Mr. Pacheco, Mr. Karen seconds the motion. All those in favor, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Public input. I don't see anyone on Zoom. Uh, Mr. O'Connor, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Ron O'Connor, 594 School Street. And, and, and believe it or not, I'm not here to talk about the library. Although I, I, I took... I took a break to get some fresh air, and I, and I and walked in um, to, to your very powerful and compelling remarks about the library, and I, I just want to express my heartfelt thanks for you doing that this evening. But I, I, I decided earlier when I came to the meeting that I was going to stay for one thing, to make one comment at the end, and then I experienced this meeting, which I, I have to say, a selectman's meeting is good for the soul, for those who don't. <laughs> and, uh, but it's... It's only something I'll endure once, so I want to get my, so I'm saving the best for last, but there are a couple of things that I, that I observed that, that I wanted to comment on. One, first of all, is the contracts for uh, the library director, Jocelyn Tavares, and town administrator, Mike Mullen, uh, long overdue and, and much appreciated recognition for them as outstanding public servants, and I, I sort of jotted down some notes here and reminded that last week the Boston Bruins gave David Pasternak uh, an eight-year contract, and that's the least we could do for uh, Mr. Mullen and Ms. Tavares is to give them contracts. So I, uh, that's a wonderful thing. And, and, you know, this was a great experience this evening with the police here, the recognition of uh, Officer Duddy and the, um, of course, Oki and his and his SRO uh, Hathaway and Officer Almeida. It, it was such an impressive sight to see the police here. Um, I, when I moved to Dighton 28 years ago. I don't think we had anywhere near the police force that we now have. And that was just an image uh, here of them all standing in front of us. Um, I was humbled by it and, and um, will add that I don't think I've ever felt more safe in a public space than I did this evening when they were here. <laughs> uh, but it was very impressive. Very it was very fortunate. impressive to see those fine um, men and women here and the recognition that the selectmen gave them. And Oki's a wonderful dog. Um, and, and the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, CPC chairman uh, Kevin Smith did a wonderful job. I, I thought I knew about CPC until I came this evening and actually before I came, read his wonderful notes are part of the packet for this evening's meeting. And so it was, I, I just really appreciate him as again, another example of a fine public servant that this <coughs> town um, should be proud of. And uh, he mentioned the, the North Dighton playground. I live in North Dighton and I have I, I thought back to the playground before it had been improved the, in the way it has and, and, and remember the old, those of you who remember, there was an old metal slide there at that playground and um, our, our daughter, when she was younger, uh, we put her on that slide. It was a long one, if you remember, it's very long and you can't experience a metal slide without a piece of wax paper under your butt. <laughs> and so, she went down pretty quickly, and that was the last time she went down on that slide. Um, but anyway, it, this is a, it, it was a great meeting this evening. And again, I, I came here to, to do one thing, and um, 
in, in these public comments, but then I, I, I couldn't help but remark on, on what else has happened here. And that, that one thing was to acknowledge my, my friend, Ken Pacheco, who will no longer uh, be serving on this board. Uh, I know you've got a couple more meetings in you, but, but I don't. I'm not going <laughs> to endure uh, another couple of meetings. Uh, I just, you know, Ken, you and I have known each other for um, well over a decade. I was introduced to you during the, the tricentennial ce celebration and I uh, was impressed by your commitment to the history of the town. And um, when I uh, learned that you were running three years ago and were elected, I knew this was going to be a great thing for the town and it certainly has been. So I, I again, stayed this evening simply to say that, um, to thank you, thank you. Uh, thank for, you for your you service to the town and look forward to continuing to work with you on, on many things uh, going forward. So. I thank you for the opportunity to speak no this problem. evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, warrants? Yes, warrants. warrants. Warrants dated March 1st, 2023. Warrants and dated March, March 2nd, 2023. Oh, thank this you. is what I, I know. That's on the agenda, but what I got here is March 2nd, so I want to go to March 2nd. Okay, thank uh, you. 35A-20, I'm asking the board to approve the following warrants from March 2nd, 2023. 35A-23. $117,754.60, 35B-23, $224,553.30. I made that motion. Do I have a second? Oh, second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. I will entertain a motion for the warrant approval of March 8, 2023. I make a motion that the Board of Selectmen approve the warrants dated March 9th, 2023, 36A-23, $116,233.79, and 36B-23, $107,954.54. March 9th? That hasn't happened yet. March 8th. It says March. I'll go to March 8th. Uh, a second. March 8th. Right. Yep. Motion has been made and second. All in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Cannon? It's an aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Acknowledgements? Cor correspondence? I do have one. Attention, Board of Selectmen, regarding Board of Sewer Commissioner vacancy. Gentlemen, due to the unexpected death of Paul Jolly, the Board of Sewer Commissioners requests an announcement be made at the next Board of Selectmen meeting stating the need for someone to fill the vacancy on the board. The term expires in 2025. They also request that you post the vacancy on the employment and volunteers section of the website. The board meets one to two times monthly as needed. Thank you for your assistance in this matter. Now, I have a question for Ms. Brady, since you are human resources. Um, in this letter, I don't see a posting end date so would that be two weeks or would it be a month or how long will the posting be we usually do approximately two weeks on posting. two weeks and um who actually will be posting it since the board of the sewer commission is our elected position Will they be the ones posting it? You'll do the posting. So the Board of Selectmen will set the date of the post. Is that correct? So I'm going to do that in the form of a motion. Um, what is your recommendation of us? When will you be posting this? We can post it tomorrow. So it's March 9th. It will close the 23rd. In the announcements, I mentioned uh, March 23rd. March 23rd? Yeah. To apply by that. Okay, date. so it'll be and 5 p.m.? Can we do 4? I'm sorry? Can we do 4 to allow us to get them in? Can we do 4 p.m.? 
4 p.m. And um, they're to be turned into the at, to you. Sure. Okay. And the the commissioners will they be appointing them or will it come back to us for a final vote? We'll turn them over to the commissioners. And they'll make the appointment. It's yeah, they make a recommend. We we, we, we do it jointly. The sewer yes. commissioners, the two remaining sewer commissioners, and the board of selectmen will uh, make that decision. Yes. So the, we'll do the interviews. Thank you. Jointly. Jointly. Yes. yes. Jointly. Okay. Like we did for the school, like for Miss Dan. Yes. Okay. I will entertain a motion to post the vacancy on the board of sewer commissioners from March 9th, the opening on March 9th, with a close date of 4 p.m. March 23. All those in favor? I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? It's an aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, approval of the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of February 8th, 2023. We've had the opportunity to review them. Are there any questions? No. Nope. With that being said, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? It's an aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Uh, we have before us approval of the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of February 22nd, 2023. Are there any questions? No. Nope. That being said, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Thank you. Uh, we will be going into executive session and we will not be returning this evening. The executive session, um, I will entertain a motion to enter executive session under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, and he does declare. Um, in regards to Dighton Town Clerical Union position, and also the Dighton Town Highway Union position. Um, also, uh, under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, conducts strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel and specifically with the fire chief. And also under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law of federal grant and aid requirements. We will also, under executive session, be approving executive session minutes of February 8th, 2023, and February 22nd, 2023. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? It's aye. Chairman Hull is an aye. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. And thank you.